Hello guys, welcome back. This is Culture Hub TV, your number one online TV station. And here, as you can see, we are seeing beautiful scenes here at the Pasti Shona Textiles where you can quench for your ultimate sophistication. Leo hapa to Kondani ya Megon Plaza, just opposite the county government offices in Bungoma Town. Tukutu na kuelekeza mwa tunakujuza tumengi kuhusiana na mambo ya fashion and design. Leo mgeni watu hapa, ataji introduce mwenyewe, atuambia ye ni nani, na nafanya nini. Karibu sana. Thank you very much for having me. Kumazina ito Sultan. I'm the head of uh, customer relations at Tastishona Textiles. We are very happy to be host, to be hosting you today. Welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Sultan. Unatokea maino gani? Where do you come from? Mimi natokea maino ya Bungoma. Mimi ni mkaji ya Bungoma, mzaliwa ya Bungoma. Mimi ni mtu ya Bungoma kabisa, in and out. Lakini sisi Bungoma tumezua majina kama wepu hulu, wafula, wanjela. Lakini Sultan, Sultan, ukisama Sultan, tunanza kufikiria mambo ya Mombasa ama Tanzania kuhu. Sultan, jina ya kazi, jina ya kikazi. Jina ya liko kwa kitambulisha? Aliko wa kitambulisho lakini majina ngu wa kitambulisho niko na jina pia ya kikwetu. Ndiyo. Hayo majina ya kikwenu. Ndiyo ya api hayo. Kama <laughs> nisiri yako. Hayo <laughs> majina ya kikwetu wanjala. Unuza nita wanjala. Mm. Yeah, nita wanjala. Yeah, now that sasa inaleta ule ubungo mandani wanjala. Wanjala. But I will call you Sultan. Jina la kikazi. Sultan. Mwana unafanya kazi nzuri. Ni kazi ambayo inapendeza inafraisha macho. Hii kazi uluanza lini? Kazi hii ya fashion ilianza mwaka wa 2016. Uh, that time tulikuwa na fashion, lifestyle and fashion magazine. It's called uh, Photo Freak magazine. So from that time, uh, it's been an online magazine that we've been running for close to six years now. And then sometime last year, we decided to open a clothing brand to start manufacturing our own designs that we have been admiring from other manufacturers. Because we've been attending so many fashion shows, both locally and abroad, to make to know mango kali kali kwenye runway. Tukasema, what about us? How can we get into this uh, uh, fashion business in a larger way, in a bigger scale, and also contribute to the textile industry in Kenya? Big. Na ulienda shule, ukasomea hii kazi ya mwule ya muka, tusiku moja, ukamua kwamba leo, unataka kuanza kazi ya kushona nguo. Kima soma ni nasomea computer science, lakini manene wa fashion niko kwenye damu. Yenu nasomea mambo ya computer, unakunye unanza kudun mangu material. Unapata. How is that even possible? You know the goodness with the computer science, there are some aspects of the course that encourage you, that help you to innovate in other areas. Mimi neza kuwa nafanya biashara ya fashion, lakini kuna ule ujuzi wa computer science, ile innovation, tunasema creativity ambayo unatoa kwa sector moja ya kiusoni, unaleta kwa sector nyingine. So unapata maneno kama last year when we had coronavirus, there are some fashion designers who are using 3D models to showcase their designs, because at that time we could not have fashion shows. So you could see a designer from Ghana who was using a 3D model to showcase her designs, which is computer science in itself. So in this in this in this aspect, when you combine you know computer science and fashion, you bring some 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 flesh, you know, some level of innovativeness that uh, maybe we to a fashion only cannot be able to have. Yes. Yeah. And uh, maybe when this someone in job market and they kuskuma labda ukapungua the unemployment rate yeah. in the country. Ilikusukuma pia kupungo ibeshara? It is a contributing factor because for the longest time ibeshara yetu ya fashion imekua Nairobi. Iyo fashion magazine, we've been uh, doing fashion mostly in Nairobi, Mombasa, the bigger towns. Lakini being a, a, a son of Bungoma, you know, I decided to come and set up this textile production uh, center in Bungoma so that I can also empower my own people. I know unemployment is high in many places out throughout the country, but uh, it's good for you to, you know, build your own home before you start to think of building other homes first. Yeah. Have you ever been employed before in any office after your school? I've not been employed before. Uh, the office that I've worked in is uh, when I was doing my attachment, yeah, campus. That is the only time I was working at someone's office. Uh, first year and second year, yeah, from that time I've always been uh, self-employed. Yeah. 
and uh, just talk of attachments. When I was coming in, actually I met a certain lady here, and uh, she told me that she's on attachment. Yes. Do you offer attachment? Is this now a college, or what is it? Yes, we do offer attachment and internship opportunities. We also train uh, fresh students who are green uh, in tailoring. And uh, our very first attaches when we opened last year were some uh, three students from uh, University of Eldoret who are doing fashion and design as a degree. They visited, they saw the, our scale of business, they saw the number of machines we have, the type of machines we have, and they felt that uh, this place is conducive for them to improve their skills. So yes, we do offer attachment opportunities to students also who are in uh, Tibet institutions, colleges, and uh, even right now we have some students from uh, Sangalo, uh, Sangalo College around. We've had some students from Kisiwa College. So yes, we do offer attachment. And do, do they pay anything to be offered in this internship or attachment? It depends on the level of skill because uh, when students come for attachment, you know, they come differently. There are some students who in, in school, they only dealt with uh, the theory part of the course. So when they come here, they're very green. They need, uh, a, 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 they need someone to be assigned to them. They need a tailor to be assigned to them full time. Every day teaching you how to, you know, step on the machine, how to cut different shapes, how to, you know, do sketches, how to design. So for a student who comes when uh, I can say maybe their level of skill is, is less than 3 over 10, then they'll need to pay something because that money will now go into the tailor because I'll have to divide the working hours of the tailor. The time that they would spend working for, you know, producing, they now spend some of that time teaching other students. So we, we negotiate depending after the first interview, after we see how much you can do on the machine, what can you make, what can you not make, and then we can be able to tell you whether you're going to pay anything, whether you're going to pay a, pay a small amount, or whether you're going to pay the full amount. And have you ever thought of opening, a, let's say, a college to teach them how to do the tailoring? Yes, uh, that is, is, is in the works. We've been planning on that for the longest time. There's a, a college that is coming up because, uh, you know, proximity to a place where you can practice after college is, is very nice. And because we already have set up a, a nice production flow, students from our college will easily benefit from this experience that they'll get down here. So a college is surely coming up. And back to your work now. I see you have uh, just majored in African wear. Why the African wear? African wear is a big part of our production process because there's this notion that Africa imports more than it exports. And now with the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, there are measures that have been put in place to level the playing field for African countries that are producing made in, made in Africa items. So, you know, there are so many trade agreements from ECOWAS, from the East African community, from the African Union. And the people who are going to benefit from these trade agreements are the ones who are going to produce made in Africa items. So as you can see, even from the clothes that we have on display, we try to blend African fabric on top of uh, imported fabrics because we realize that we want to give it an African touch. And the moment you use uh, imported fabric all the time, you lose, your, you lose your, your identity as an African. And Africa is very beautiful, by the way. <laughs> so the African fabric is really much admired by people from outside. This time we had a visitor client here who walked in, uh, a, a, white, a white, white lady. She's, I think she's from Europe. And we had so many clothes on display, but she did not want any of those fabrics that uh, have, have been imported. She wanted pure kitenge, pure kitenge. And we did not have a pure kitenge at that time. And it, was, it hit us very hard because we realized that, uh, you know, they have all these fabrics in their own countries. But when they come to Africa, they need to wear what is made in Africa. We need to also export the African uh, culture to them, not just import all the time. Yes. And do you have something for the Sipangungu generation? They want to choose their dress code. Do you have something for the youth? Yes, we do allow our clients to come up with their own designs. We have a very uh, innovative team, especially the young people who are coming for internship and attachment. Some of them are very creative. They just lack the place to practice their creativity and to put their skills to, you know, to come out to light. But to give them space, if you look at some of our sketching books, we have sketches of some very innovative designs that have been done by our students on attachment. But we allow our clients to send pictures of what they want, even on WhatsApp. We design them. We have very creative tailors here who can bring out exactly what you want. So we have a diverse clientele, depending on what you want. Of course, we have 
you know, the long dresses, we have the short dresses, we have uh, coats, you know, the modern coats, we have the, you know, also fabric, that those, that there's a type of fabric that is old and there's a type of fabric that is modern. So we combine everything, you know, whether it's the Sipangwingwi or uh, <laughs> Azimio, <laughs> yeah, everything is there. So you serve everybody, kutokea kwa waze, mpaka kwa vijana. Exactly, yes we do. And uh, swali ambalo singe penda sana kukwepa, Siku yako ikiwa nzuri, how much do you make in a day? Most of our payments are not made on a daily basis. Most of our payments are made after a delivery has been done because mostly we target to produce in bulk. Uh, yes, we can have odd daily orders or when people walk in and purchase items, but most of the time it's a, it's a deposit for, uh, that is done when we take a new order and the full payment is done when we complete the order. So it's very hard to estimate <laughs> our daily. <laughs> I understand, I understand. And uh, where do you get your Vitenge uh, material from? Many places. Uh, you see, with the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, it has made a bit easier uh, business across African countries. We have some fabric from Kampala, we have some fabric from Congo, we have some fabric from uh, Nigeria, some, some of them we purchase in Nairobi, so our fabric comes from different places, m largely because of the ease of movement of goods and services. So our fabric also comes from Ghana, so it just depends on uh, where you get it. Some, you can even find a Ghanaian fabric in Nairobi. So you purchase in Nairobi, yes, you might say it comes from Nairobi, but it actually comes from Ghana. And how do you identify uh, an original fabric from a fake one? Sabini Kenya tunelewa pia. Yeah, so fabric unangalia texture. Because uh, there are some, uh, even when you go to buy, when you feel the different texture, you'll know this is pure cotton, ingine kona wax mingi, ingine kona wax kidogo, and there are also different prices. Topata ya 1,000, ya 300, ya 200, you know, 1,300. So from there you can tell which one is, is, is better and which one is, is not good. And you know, here in Kenya, anything is original and anything can be fake. Yeah. Utapata material. It looks so original, but when you go and wash it just once, you yeah. know when you come paint up on that. How do you identify now the fake ones from the original? The good thing is also to do your own research online, you know, and also from the market. Because when you do your research, you will be able to know naya na to authentic naya na uzavi to fake. So research is important. I cannot say that uh, uh, there's someone with a with a monopoly of knowledge of what is uh, what is original and what is fake, but research really helps a lot because there are some specific vendors who have purely authentic products. Na kuna wali pia takombea ta ini fake. Ukitaka fake pia unanunua. So for a business person, research is very important for you to understand your, your suppliers, your producers, where you're sourcing for items. And I can say that... Uh, yeah, it has been a slow, you know, slow process. Even before you can order, let's say you're in Bungoma and you want to order some items from Nairobi, if you don't want to go yourself, you're ordering, you've sent money, you're expecting them. If you don't have an authentic seller, mzigo itakuza ifike Bungoma upate ni fake. Unapigi umtu nambu, unapata haingi. So by the time you trust somebody to uh, package for you authentic items and put them on a, on transit, zikuze Bungoma, it takes time, it takes trust, you know. With time, you are able to to know who are the good people and who are the the bad people. Yeah. And uh, upon our marketing, do you only work with orders or muna shona tungo pia zile za display kama zile tu meona pale inje na kuhuza tu randomly or you always work with orders? We have a lot of clothes ready-made items, uh, even that you can see uh, in front of us. Because you know there are also those clients who want to come in and, and work out with something. They, they don't want to be taken measurements, they don't want uh, to come with their own design, they just want to walk in, find something nice and walk out with them. So we have several of them here that you can just come and uh, you know select, like you go to a supermarket and shop for items. So we have both, custom orders, ready-made items, all of them, but they're all made here. We don't have any items that have been bought outside and come to be to be displayed here. Everything is made here. Yeah. Na kila kazi kama kawaida kukosi challenges, what are some of the challenges that you face yeah. on your work? Yeah, so far, challenges mean, uh, especially for as at now, maintenance of machines. Uh, Bungoma is a bit uh, deprived of, uh, let's say, machine engineers who are very good at uh, repairing these machines. 
So every time you have a breakdown of a machine, if it cannot, if you cannot find a, a good uh, uh, mechanic to repair it, you have to call someone from Nairobi. There's a transport cost, accommodation cost, you know, food before you even get to pay them. And also some of these spare parts uh, that are also not very easy to find within town. But uh, yeah, it's just the challenge of getting everything within Bungoma. But you know, with devolution, I'm very positive within a short time, months or even a few years, we can be able to, we can make Bungoma independent in terms of providing all this uh, equipment that we need. That sounds so great. Ni rea sana kusikia mtu anafanya biashara yake and is not after making money, but is after actually changing the community. And that is commendable work, Mr. Sultan. Nimeona umeajiri watu hapa. So far, ukona employees wangapi kwa ikazi yako? Most of our employees are not permanent. Uh, they are on contract basis or on job to job basis. Because sometimes you can get an order of maybe even 100 uniforms, 200 uniforms, and you need more tailors, so you have to bring in more personnel. But uh, on average, we cannot have less than six or seven tailors at a go. Yeah, because we have different machines that provide, that do different jobs. So for every machine, every unique machine has to have an operator. Yeah, and we have several unique machines. So each one of them has to have an operator. And so where do you see yourself or see this your company of yours in the next five to ten years? I see a very big textile production center because uh, when we moved in, we wanted bigger space to begin with. We wanted a warehouse. We could not find a warehouse within Bungoma. We wanted uh, a, a place with, uh, you know, with larger production space. We even wanted more tailors. We are hoping to, to get more tailors because we have close to 20 machines. And I feel like in the next few years, we're going to have a, a fully fledged college that is going to provide training for not just tailoring, fashion and design, but also other courses. We're going to produce in bulk, like, you know, 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 pieces a day. Yeah, that is the direction we are taking. Now, when you are, you took Malaysia from home, you are in the university now. When you are in the university, you are in the university, you are in the university, Tunenda kushtua village, like nafanya computer science, like now umefanya. Nenda kufanya actual science, nenda kufanya all those big courses. Watu wali kuchukuliaje wakatu ulimadiza course ya computer science. Then, boom, unafungua biashara ya fashion and design. Now that wewe ni mwanaume, and people believe that mambo ya kushu unashona ni mambo ya wanawake. How do people take you? in the community? <laughs> Very interesting question. I think uh, the community embraces everybody. And uh, even part of that embracing, like right now we have a program that we are launching very soon of donation of school uniforms. We have tailored uh, school uniforms for over five schools that we're going to distribute in my home area where, where, I, where I was born, where I grew up. And that is part of enlightening the community that uh, Yes, we can have children of this community to grow up and, you know, succeed or do good things in life and come back to impact the community. So I think the community won't judge you very harshly if you do a cause that sounds bougie, <laughs> but they'll embrace you. Yeah, they'll, they'll, in fact, they'll embrace you more when you give back to the community. So, yes, uh, we are going to give back and I'm sure the community will embrace us even more because we want to also empower those ones who are behind us and those ones who have not maybe managed to get their footing to, to, to get their footing. So yeah, I feel like the community is, uh, is, 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 an, is encouraged when their children uh, do good things in life and they, they progress in their careers. And uh, there are these men out there who cannot even massage their ego. They feel like they cannot do some other things like they just want office work. Kazi za wanaume. Do you have something for them? Kazi za wanachagua kazi. Chagua kazi. Like how are you doing? Shona nguo mini wanaume nita shona jingu. Wanaume wengi sana wa shona nguo. Kuna wale, especially bungoma. By the way, umetembe bungoma? Bungoma, bungoma ikona people with their ego is so high. Yeah. Like they cannot do some things because the notion of mimi ni mwanaume 
yeah like vitu ambavyo viko associated na wanawake they cannot do that i just have a question for them like if you the coat you're wearing as a man or the trousers you're wearing by, as a man is probably made by another man and the fact that you are a man and other men are doing the job uh, that uh, you don't want to do and they're earning even more you know the good thing with any work is actually the income kama wewe mwanaume uko na kazi nyingine yeye anapata pesa nyingi kushinda pesa ya kushona ni sawa lakini kama ana criticize kazi ya kushona na kazi yenye anafanya inampatia pesa kidogo kushinda kazi ya kushona then they don't have moral authority to criticize men male tailors because most of these men in my whole uh close to 10 years of fashion industry i've not seen i think i've seen less than 10 women who who do men coats yeah so atutakuwa na coats za wanaume because uh, we don't have male tailors yeah so i feel like it's uh people should not really discriminate male tailors but i've not seen personally I've not seen that discrimination to uh, as you say but i feel like work has its own um you know has its own respect when it can be able to give you income kama ni kazi ya mjengo na kupatia income just be proud of it kama ni kazi ya kushona na kupatia income be proud of it you know the, at the end of the day everybody wants to put food on the tables and according to me uh, whatever you do to put food on the table as long as it's, it's digni- dignified it has you know its own uh, dignity you're good to go thank you so much na pengine uko na social media accounts ambazo ungependa watu wajue how they will find you for those uh, online buyers how will they get you yeah our pages are available on all platforms that is tastishona textiles you can check tastishona textiles kenya it's not a very hard name uh, across on facebook on twitter on instagram on linkedin and you know even on google uh, google my business well, our website is coming soon www.tastishona.com will uh, definitely make a public announcement on that is up yeah you, you have just reminded me of something there is only something in a name why did you choose the thirsty thirsty shona thirsty shona what is in this name you see thirsty shona is uh, is a very unique name in its own because our tagline is quench for the ultimate sophistication and part of our vision was to have a setup where as customers are waiting to be served as customers are waiting for their clothes to be ready they can be sipping a drink slowly because we are a luxury brand we don't want customers to come and wait and uh, enjoy na kupiga hapo hata yeah so our ultimate you know as we moving forward we're going to have a setup where clients can can relax it's going to be a mini mini restaurant you can say that will basically be serving drinks while customers are, are, are waiting to be served or waiting for the deliveries to be complete and i'm also personally largely motivated by the oceans largely motivated by water uh, the other things that i do that i also have to do with the water and oceans and uh, yeah so for this we decided to say where the quench for the ultimate sophistication because you know in other in other in other platforms they say that uh, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication so if simplicity is the ultimate sophistication then where the quench for that sophistication yeah well thank you so much sultan we are also looking forward to work with you in the near future but you come ngila mambo na charity and uh, i think leo tutaonana kwa tent hapo nyumba tuonge we are also willing to step in we are after changing the community and empowering the community yes. uh, thank you so much yeah, we are looking for we are looking for partners in our in our in our business in our both business and the donation part we are looking for people who can contribute to a donation exercise that is coming up later this year if you can donate other stationary materials if you can donate sport, sporting equipment if you can sponsor some more funds so that you can tailor more more uniforms If you have an organization that wants to sponsor a school or an institution in your neighborhood you can bring the money we do, do, do the tailoring so we are looking for all kinds of partners because we want to make sure that every child is in school and we want to make sure that every child feels respected and dignified you know no uh, so they can have proper uniform you know it starts from you know personal inspiration when you feel inspired when you feel a confident student you will also perform well in class and i can assure you that culture hub tv will be part of this thank you so much and mr sultan unasema kwamba you don't major only in the african wear una shona ngozi nyingine kando na hiyo 
Yes, tunashona nguo zote from uh, weddings as you said tunashona corporate tunashona overalls, tunashona, uh, uniforms, tunashona ngu scrubs, tunashona uniforms za wanafunzi tunashona nguo scrubs tunashona dust coats hospitali we do everything every kind of uh, textile every kind of apparel hiyo ni kazi ambayo tunapiga kabisa yeah na nimeona kazi inaendelea kule what kind of machines do you use kwa hii kazi yako we have different varieties of machines from the industrial straight machine tuko na hizi machine ordinary machines za, za wanafunzi zenye wanafunzi wadogo wadogo ambao hawana uzoefu wa kushona wanaanza wanaanza kutumia when they still need to start on this machine this machine also has a motor that can be able to you know as a student moves on from uh, the initial stage they now start using the motor from there they move to the industrial uh, straight machine This machine is the one that is used in EPZ is used in all the big factories across the world so you can be assured when you come from uh, Tastishona Textiles you have all the experience you need to tailor anywhere across the world we have a flat lock machine e machine inashona t-shirts inashona inashona sweaters inashona all types of uh, clothes that have stretching material e flat lock machine we got it uh, we got it within the East African community we have a flat lock uh, we have uh, an overlock machine kuna overlock machine hapa we have uh, two of them so you know just to ensure that when the production is uh, is high we can be able to move faster it works very efficiently all our learners all our students can also use this uh, overlock machine when they come to to learn here and we also have uh, a button hole machine it's a button holding section called it the button holding section this machine unaiona hivi kubwa hiyo machine yote it only does one simple job of putting a hole on a, on cloth machine kubwa lakini the only job it does is putting these holes or, uh, on the cloth and then this other machine it puts the button on the kwa shati kwa shati ya matroza so hii ni kashimo alafu hii ni button yeah so this section is operated by one person uh, our students who come to learn also go through this section they, they, they learn how to do the button hole and the and the button attachment we also have uh, what you call the 20u machine this is an embroidery machine It can also do zigzag uh, stitches and straight stitches. It can also do a bit of embroidery. There are some patterns that can be done on this machine that cannot be done on other embroidery machines. It's limited in some way but it also it's also very versatile in in many other ways. And the one behind you finally is a, is a chain stitch machine. The chain stitch machine is also an embroidery machine as you can see there's a handle below it. This handle is the one that does uh, the circular embroidery embroidery stitches like this one. So when you, when you when you check this this uh, handle below here around in circles it does this beautiful embroidery patterns that you can see on the on most of the african prints that you see out there. So we have capacity to produce all kinds of clothes whether they are corporate clothes, weddings, uh, uniforms, african wear, all types of designs. We do them here at a very affordable cost and we're also very hospitable and we make sure that uh, you come out very satisfied. Guys this is Culture Hub TV your number one online TV station and we are here at uh, the first show on textile just in Bungoma town inside the, the Megon Plaza it is uh, located on the Megon Plaza ground floor just opposite the county government offices here you can get all types of uh, clothes uh, african wear african wear kama unataka vitenge unataka nini the bomber jackets mezioni ziko pale kwa wingi shati nguo za harusi hapa kama mnataka kufanya harusi the african way the traditional way you can come to thirsty shona textiles na utakuwa served and will be contented with everything remember to watch like subscribe and share and also comment on our videos na ufinye that notification bell so that when you upload our new videos utakuwa tu pale kuziona bila kuchelewa thank you until next time as usual mimi ni monica juma